Cell membranes help cells maintain homeostasis by controlling what substances can come into and out of a cell. What types of substances are able to pass through a cell membrane? This is membrane permeability. What would it be like if there were no doors anywhere in your school? That might sound great, but think about what kinds of things would be able to come into your classroom at any time, like mosquitoes. We have doors to regulate who or what can come in and out of a building or a room. Cell membranes are similar because they have doorways made of protein that can allow only specific dissolved substances in and out of a cell. This is what we call selective permeability. Substance, substances like oxygen molecules that are important for sustaining life can easily get into a cell when there is a difference in concentration on either side of the cell membrane. In this investigation, we will use a model to study how only specific dissolved solutes can cross a semi-permeable membrane. I have already connected my pH sensor to SparkView and have added hydrochloric acid and starch to this dialysis bag. This bag and its contents represent a model of a cell. The dialysis bag is a semi-permeable membrane. We will see if, if either the hydrochloric acid or starch can pass through the bag into the solution in the beaker. The beaker contains an iodine solution which turns a blue-black color when it contacts starch. So we will also know if iodine is able to move from the solution into the bag or vice versa because anywhere we see a blue-black color indicates both starch and iodine are present. The pH sensor helps us determine whether the hydrogen ions from the acid have left the bag. In the second run, this sensor will help detect hydroxide ions. I'm going to turn on the magnetic stirrer, and in a moment, I'm going to set the bag in the beaker, and then I'll start data collection. First, you need to record the initial colors of the bag and beaker solutions in Table 1. Pause the video and resume play when you are finished recording your observations. I'm going to start collecting data recorded to the initial pH before adding the bag. Now I'm going to set the bag in the beaker and allow data collection to run for another three and a half minutes. We will speed up data collection for you. It's been about three and a half minutes with the bag in the beaker, so I'm going to stop collecting data now. And I'm going to take out the bag so you can see. Now that we've finished data collection, you can make final observations of the solutions in the beaker and the bag. Remember, if you see a blue-black color, both iodine and starch are present. Pause the video and resume play when you're done recording observations in Table 1. For the second run, we will get a new beaker of water, which will not be an iodine solution since we already tested to see if starch or iodine can pass through the bag. Let's look at the bag again. I just mixed it up a little more and you can probably see it. Observations a little more now. Okay, now I'm going to get my new beaker. I have to rinse my sensor. And the magnet.
make your observations of sodium hydroxide bag. This has only sodium hydroxide and no starch and the color of the beaker. Pause the video to record your initial observations and resume play when you are finished. I'm going to turn on the magnetic stirrer and start collecting data to record the initial pH before adding the bag. Now I'm going to set the bag in the beaker and allow data collection to run for another three and a half minutes. We will speed up data collection for you. The bag has been in the water for about three and a half minutes, so I'm going to stop collecting data. And I'm turning off my stirrer. Now that we have finished data collection, you can make final observations of the solutions in the bag and in the beaker. This is the sodium hydroxide run. Pause the video, record your final observations, and resume play when you're finished. Then we'll move on to the analysis. In table two, you will need to record initial and final pH values for each run. Use the coordinate tool in Spark View to help you get these values from the data. These are x, y coordinates. So the first value is time, and the second value is pH. I can click and drag the gray box to move it to initial and final data points on each run. Notice how both runs are checked in the legend. I can hide or make a run visible by checking the box. If I want to get coordinates for the HCL run, I need to make sure the red box in the legend is on that run. When you use any of the SparkView tools, make sure the red box is on the run you are interested in. To view both runs at the same time at full scale, make sure both runs are checked in the legend. Then hit the scale button. You should be viewing both runs fully scaled when you complete graph one as directed in the instructions. You now have enough information to complete the lab. Good luck on your next lab. Take a deep breath and think about the oxygen molecules moving into your cells through their cell membranes.